Guess who's swimming last minute again? I just had a banana, it might be in my teeth. I guess I kind of have an excuse this week. I was traveling for the first half of it and so I'm a little late on my general schedule. So my makeup's already done. Also Russ, it's home. She also got a haircut. It's so bad. <laughs> the groomer said, so a half an inch? And I thought she meant a half an inch off. She meant a half an inch. <laughs> she had a little bow, but it had gone missing by the time I got her, but here she is. You want me to unhand you? Okay. Yes, all right. And Russ has been a little bit pissy ever since, so fair. I know she cold, but it's summer, it's fine. And once it heats up a little bit more, she'll be good. Anyway, hi, by the way, I didn't even introduce myself. Hi, it's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up, home skillet biscuit? Happy Saturday. If you don't know what Saturday is, it's when I do a little something on my channel called Bat Movies in a Beat. The series, la, 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 the series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. But like I said, I was traveling the first half of this week, so I'm really behind, so. Face already done. Before we get started, you guys know the drill. It's time to send it over to ad roll, Kenny, because bills never cease. Take it away. Hello everyone, this is ad roll, Kenny, and today's video is sponsored by Helix. Helix offers quality mattresses customized to fit your needs, delivered conveniently to your front door in a box and it's easy to set up and easy to enjoy. I've been sleeping on my Helix mattress for about five months and I absolutely love it. I'm liking it more and more as time goes on actually. It was super easy to find the mattress that matches my personal needs by taking their online quiz. I got the Midnight Lux with standard cooling and it's the perfect amount of support and softness for me and Russ, because Russ loves it. Because she refuses to sleep in her bed now because she's like, ooh, mama sleeps in a nice bed. Why well, I gotta sleep in a crate? I wanna sleep in a nice bed and I haven't slept alone since. <laughs> and for good reason, it's comfy. Helix mattresses come in a box, easy to install. I got a man to do it, cause I don't lift things. <laughs> I'm too pretty to lift things. And once it's like fully aerated, you're ready to go. They offer a 100 night trial, a 10 year warranty, and financing and flexible payment options are available as well. They're also having a Memorial Day sale where you can get your Helix mattress for 25% off with two free pillows and free shipping through June 4th. So if you would like to check out those savings and check out Helix in general, you can click on my link down below. That's helixsleep.com slash KennyJD. Big thanks to Helix for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery. So last time we were here, we talked about the movie, The Strays, came out in 2022, and it was the story of a black, light-skinned woman who was afraid that her dark-skinned past was haunting her. Though that premise sounds really ludicrous, it is a movie that was almost good. It had, it had the ability to be good, but in my opinion, wasn't. Some people liked it, I saw in the comment section, and you guys are always fair to have your opinions. I'm not gonna play, I don't give a <laughs> I didn't make the movie, well, I care. But, to me, uh, it really dropped the ball in really getting to the point of what it was actually trying to say. So, in my opinion. But if you would like to see that video and any comedy I got from it, feel free to check it out up above, or you can check it out in the Bat Movies in a Beat playlist. So, <laughs> today we're talking about a movie that's been on my list for a while. It is one of those things that I kept in my back pocket when I was low on time because I knew that it was gonna be uh, a mess, but a mess that's just entertaining by way of it being a mess and not that we have to sit here and have some whole social dialogue interpretation. It ain't that deep, it's on Tubi. And I figured it was gonna be innately entertaining. It's about an egotistical, cheating, lying, money-grubbing pastor. I watched it and unfortunately it was shockingly boring for such a you know, overall, Interesting sounding concept. Eek, how do you f that up? Again, I don't really expect quality from Tubi, but I do expect entertainment, dropping the ball. Um, but this movie was so bad that I like couldn't get through it the first few times. It was like shockingly boring again, considering subject matter. Quality is negligible, <laughs> there is none. Uh, the audio is awful. Um, <laughs> and so is just everything that you would expect from an independent movie off of Tubi. Acting's terrible, writing's terrible, audio's terrible, editing's terrible. 
it's bad in every way that structurally constitutes a movie. But as always, despite it being terrible, it still reeks of good content. So here we are. Today we are talking about Pastor Thorne, Lust of the Flesh. If that doesn't sound like a 1997 straight to VHS porno movie, I don't know what does. <laughs> but it's an independent film made by our friends over at Maverick Productions. If you've ever seen a hood movie that starts off with a horse running, that's them. We've discussed several of their films thus far. They make trash. Unironically, I am forever in debt to them. They <laughs> they have made so much garbage and have made my life so much easier. Thank you. But today we're talking about Pastor Thorne, which is about a pastor that has lost his way, uh, focusing too much on money and women and not on Fuck Jesus, I don't know. For a movie that's supposed to be about a pastor, we only see him preach one time at the very beginning of the movie. Everything else we see is, I guess, what he does from Monday to Saturday night, uh, which is be a fucking menace. <laughs> we don't see shit about him being a pastor. All we see him doing is biting his lip and getting booty, respectfully. Don't wanna speak <laughs> ill of the man of God. And despite this movie being ripe for content, drama, outrage, this is not a movie that's meant to be watched. <laughs> it's meant to be read. <gasps> I did it! This is the first time I ever did it! I bought it for Beyonce concert. Uncle Johnny made my dress that she's friend that she looks a mess. Fan me off my... Sorry, scared my dog. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Pastor Jacob Thorne has a prominent church and stellar reputation in his city. However, as his fame continues to grow, it is also blinding him, causing him to lose focus on what really matters, his family. However, once his son blows into town, I guess he don't count. He <laughs> didn't. His life begins to go on an unexpected whirlwind that could cause his life to take, wait, <laughs> Not them trying to get the work out. His life begins to take an unexpected whirlwind that, that could cause his life to take on an unwanted spiral downhill. Wow. Outside of the, the questionable grammar choices, uh, this is actually a shockingly inaccurate <laughs> synopsis of this movie. This is very misleading. He doesn't lose focus. He never had it, at least on camera. We never saw it. The, his life taking an unexpected turn has nothing to do with his kid. Like his kid is annoying. Well, no, he's genuinely a terrible person as well. You know, apple fall from the tree, whatnot. But uh, things were going downhill way before the kid got here, but okay. Like the kid is very annoying at first, just like really pissy and loud and horrible. Like of all the actors, he's the worst, which is a feat, truly. And then later he's just downright rapey and gross. But to suggest that the son is the sole reason why this shit uh, goes haywire is truly hysterical once you see how the movie goes, but anyway. But to be more concise, Pastor Jacob Thorne is a money-grubbing egotistical douche who cheats on his wife all the time and is completely unhinged. <laughs> and by the end of the movie, he finally gets the repercussions for that. There you go. Hire me. I do charge a fee, but I do get to the point. Damn it. Yes. <laughs> so without further ado, this is Pastor Thorne, 2022, which is also interesting because the movie looks mad old. So the movie opens with the first thing that you got to know about Pastor Thorne, which is he be f***ing. More specifically, he be f***ing the deacon's wife, amongst other women that he that aren't his wife. We see him f***ing the deacon's wife or associate pastor, so, someone that works with him, while we hear a, a voiceover of his Sunday sermon. Um, whoever filmed this sex scene, of course I can't show it to you. I have never seen a sex scene that was so close to a man's ass crack that I can see the individual hairs. I don't think it's playing on someone's like Christian channel. But imagine, you, imagine your grandma going on there thinking, oh, I'm gonna see this Christian movie. And you see straight up ass, and we see all up in it, it's a lot of ass. Pastor got a fatty. Um, but I'm just saying, uh, somehow this movie is incredibly low quality, but also we could see the individual hairs. I'm being descriptive, okay? This is my job, anyway. But uh, he also sucks, if you can tell already by the fact that he was cheating on his wife with the deacon's wife. They spend their time at a hotel and he leaves. And then on Sunday, you know, he's in, you know, face to face with the deacon. The deacon's talking about the numbers for the week, how many people they got to become members, how much money they made via offerings, tithes and offerings. And these things don't seem to be okay with Pastor Thorne, uh, despite 
being the largest congregation in the area and making over $320,000 a week just from offerings and stuff like that. It's not like you pay taxes, bitch. But he seems to take it very personally, saying that the congregation needs to start taking care of their man of God and this is how they treat me. And the deacon is like, what happened to caring about people getting saved like people getting saved me and I make more money and they were like no not necessarily then I don't give a stellar writing very very subtle not at all too on the nose <laughs> like then the deacon's wife comes in if the deacon can't tell something is going on uh he must be lying to himself because what the fuck is this I am so glad you were blessed by it exceedingly and abundantly so the love you two share is rare, son. What's so rare about it? She f***ing the past. <laughs> he has a son who doesn't stay with him, an adult son, maybe college age, give or take, that's staying with his mother, so the child's mother, who is not the same as his current wife. He's on the streets selling drugs, ends up getting busted by an undercover cop. And so his mother ends up sending the son, his name is JR, by the way, so Junior, whatever, to uh, Pastor Thorne's house because she's like, I can't, I don't know what to do with him. He's obviously going rogue, I guess. And when the son comes over, it's it's obvious that there's some tension between them. Uh, the son doesn't give a about the church. The pastor gives too much about how bad the kid is making him look as the pastor. So it seemed that there's always been, or there has been for quite a long time, some tension between those two. I think it's because they're very similar people. But it would seem that everyone around Pastor Thorne is very well aware at this point in his life that he don't give a about God. He just wants to f people's wives and make a lot of money and have like people blindly respect him because he's the man of God. But his wife, her name is Leslie, ends up kind of chastising him about how he's obviously gone away from the purpose of being a pastor. And instead of like really sitting with that information and maybe reflecting a little bit, he instead turns to her and says, bitch, the reason you had a miscarriage is because God is punishing you for your disrespect towards his ordained pastor. <laughs> Again, just a little, <laughs> just a little on the nose, a little on, on it. Okay. <laughs> it, I'm not, that's obviously horrible. <laughs> That's obviously terrible. I think it's also funny because I didn't see this until the second watching, which is hilarious because he was loud as f <laughs> Like, I don't know how I missed it the first time. I guess she's so broken down by her relationship with him that she don't uh, immediately beat his ass. She just start uh, whimpering and crying and shit. And I'm like, look, I get it. He hurt your feelings. But did you know that you can beat his ass and cry at the same time? It's called multitasking. Eventually, Pastor quote unquote, apologizes to his wife about the miscarriage comment. But at first he tries to blame her for it because he's like, look, I got all these frustrations at the church and then you always pressing my buttons. And she's like, what type of apology is this? And he's like, okay, yeah, I apologize. Perfect timing now that that's all settled. In walks the pastor's cousin, Tony, who is someone that doesn't really go to the church, but he's kind of known as a person who goes to clubs, meets women, has a new girlfriend every week. That's what he's known for, right? But this week he's talking about the woman that he met and he's like, I am smitten. I'm in love with this woman, even though I met her yesterday or some shit like that. And he brings her to their house unannounced, by the way. He just brought his, his girlfriend that he met yesterday to his cousin and his wife's house and told the cousin and the wife to cook her a meal. <laughs> I would beat his ass. I hate that this how you had to meet me, love, but you should know that I will beat your ass if you come over my house unannounced and then ask for a meal. But before I guess they can get mad like I would, here comes Junior and we can see a bit more of Junior's personality. He's a smarmy weirdo. Goes up to the woman and flirts with her very heavily. Of all of the people in this movie, he's the one that makes me <laughs> deeply uncomfortable whenever he's on screen. There's something about his like the way he smiles, there's, it doesn't reach his eyes. And he's just the, like this kind of like, uh, like kind of freaky <laughs> and rest assured, he's a terrible person in this movie. So maybe that was on purpose. I don't know. Pastor also flirts with a woman, but he does it from a distance. So like slightly less weird, I guess. I don't know. I think it's just as bad to behold as a third party participant. But this is the first of many instances that we're gonna learn that the pastor is able to flirt with women, get them to fall in love with him, want to take their draws off, all with telepathy and a lip bite. And considering he was already the deacon's wife, I'm not surprised that he's gonna go after his cousin's girlfriend too. But damn, 
Still crazy. Like I said, this girlfriend is a woman that he met in a club the day before. And for some reason, they're already talking about marriage at a family dinner. <laughs> the future, like what, you know, where could we see this going or whatever? Y'all all some weirdos. Anyway, but they're having a good enough night as you'd expect for a shitty Tubi movie to go. And then the cousin goes to the bathroom. And during that time, of course, the pastor and the girlfriend take this chance to be incredibly inappropriate. Apparently she is a fan of his. He got groupies. The pastor got groupies. She's like, I've never, you know, witnessed somebody so deeply captivating and really makes me want to get more connected with God, you feel me? And the moment she met the cousin Tony, she and found out that they were related, she knew that she just had to come meet him because she's, you know, such a big fan. And she would love to get like a more one-on-one -on -one, you know, meeting, a Bible study, if you will, so that we can get closer to the word of God. So she gives him her number by taking his phone out of his pocket and putting it in there herself. And the son comes back witnessing that whole exchange, but apparently doesn't feel the need to say anything in the moment because he's probably used to his dad being a cheating bitch anyway, but whatever. Now that everyone's gone home, Pastor then decides to try to initiate sex with his wife for once, first time uh, in this entire movie that we've seen him put any affection towards her, but she isn't ready for sex because she is traumatized still by the loss of their child that they lost three months ago. In her mind, she's really working through the issue that every time they have sex, they have a chance to get pregnant and a chance at pregnancy means a chance at losing their baby. And she's like, I can't. I can't do that again. Now, I could understand that this being a very difficult time for a married couple because sex is a way that some people feel particular intimacy. So, you know, not being able to have sex is one thing. So I get that it's a hard situation to be in, but it doesn't seem that the pastor really waited long <laughs> to say, okay, well, I'm gonna start Deacon's wife then because like, he didn't even try to be patient. I don't know. He's a selfish dickhead, so of course he is. He goes to text the deacon's wife. They've presumably been f***ing for a while now. And then we get a shot at their home, the deacon and his wife's home. And the deacon is like, I thought your phone wasn't working because you said that's the reason why you haven't been able to text me back. And she was like, oh, it's just like, like the texts get to me super late. It's super weird. I'm just responding to my sister right now. So yeah, and then I'm gonna head to bed or whatever. He's like, oh, well, if that's the case, we're gonna, we should get your phone fixed. Oh, 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 bitch. I had an ugly ass case like that. Uh, Shout out to Lux Edition. When I was in like, ooh, 10th grade, I had a hideous case like this. I kind of want to buy one just for old time's sake. <laughs> They were like 70 bucks and they were gaudy. The stones always fell off. I want to buy one just for the nostalgia of it. So if the next time you see me with a video and it's this hideous Lux addiction case over like a practical and my screen's probably too because it, they're not at all efficient at keeping your phone safe. You, you'll know that this is an inside joke, but she can't make it. So instead he decides to text the cousin's girlfriend, Tony's girlfriend, and she's very quick to respond. She's like, oh, I've been waiting for you to talk to me. You know, blah, 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 blah. She sends a picture of herself in lingerie. He sends a picture of his dick. They obviously own the same wavelength. And this scene, side note, is incredibly drawn out. It's two people texting each other with like horrible iMovie preset texting going on. They didn't even do the bubbles. Damn, the least you could have did is the bubble. But okay, and this like very chill R&B playing, nobody's talking and it goes on for like a solid three to five minutes. I almost passed out. I think this is usually the scene that I'm like, I can't do it. <laughs> but apparently he does end up seeing her that night, but we don't see the the sexual exchange take place. The next morning, his wife is like, oh, you came back pretty late. What was that? And he was like, oh, he had to rush to strategize about the church with the deacon. You know, they need to get back on track with everything. And the wife says that she's gonna be away for most of the day, but she'll be back later that night. She's gonna be running some errands and stuff like that. Meaning that him and his son will be home alone the whole day, which means they are probably gonna go toe to toe, go for blows. But luckily, there's a distraction in town by the name of a girl named Jada, who's around the same age as the son. She's the daughter of one of the members of the church, but this particular member has something to do with the finances of the church, right? So she's important in that way. I don't know why they sent, girl, it's a shit movie. I was about to say, I don't know why they sent her to deliver papers or something, but it's a f movie on Tubi, Kendall. Don't ask stupid ass questions like that. JR ends up being uh, 
attracted to her and flirting with her very heavily and it's awful um but she seems to be into it it's also evident that this is supposed to be like a poorly done attempt at comedy uh but which this movie does a lot but it's just awful and cringe and horrible but pastor ends up seeing jr flirting with this girl and once she leaves he is very quick to say back the f away from her she has to do with finances with the church something about the loan the guy has something to do with for the building so shut the f up and leave her alone back in the church office the deacon is trying to give information on things that could help improve membership and just general experience at the church but he's too busy sexing somebody one of them oh my god and he <laughs> To such an extent, he doesn't even notice he's in there when he starts grabbing his dick. This movie's incredibly cringe, but there's nothing more cringe than seeing someone's sexts. Because sex in real life are just inherently cringy if you're like <laughs> not one of the people who are sexting. So seeing somebody write, yo dick so big it could part the Red Sea is insane. I was gonna skip the scene because it's just pure horniness, but it is also incredibly unhinged. So I also wanted to like talk about it. Like again, he starts kneading his crotch with another person in the room that's talking about things that must be done for God. <laughs> He's like, Pastor, you listening? He's like, leave, I'm trying to get my dick wet. Back to the deacon and his wife. She realizes that her phone is missing, yeah? And she doesn't know where it could have gone. She put it where she always puts it but it's gone come to find out the deacon had taken the phone and in an effort to be like kind to her was like okay i'll go get your phone fixed because since you have so many issues with text messages not kidding here on time it's obvious you got to get your phone fixed and while she doesn't have her phone he ends up getting a call from her gyno who's been trying to reach her in regards to setting up her next appointment because she hasn't uh called since she found out she was pregnant now this scene is very stupid. All of it is so, why am I clarifying? It's all dumb. Even stupider because the doctor explicitly explains why this would not be in a movie. She's like, this is literally going against confidentiality. Your wife's pregnant and she needs to schedule her appointments for that. This is so funny because she didn't even have to do that. She's just calling to set up an appointment. She, she didn't have to say for what. Back to JR being a weirdo, uh, he finds the banker's daughter's house after knocking on everyone's door on the street until he found hers and her dumbass let him in. They're both young and stupid, so I, yeah, I guess, but damn. They start talking, he gets into the sob story about how him and his father aren't close. That makes her wanna heal him, I guess, with her love or whatever. I've talked about that uh, ad nauseum about, <laughs> about that trope, just in romance in general, but particularly amongst like Christian circles, like let me heal him with my love and this pussy. Maybe not before we, commit ourselves to Christ or whatever, but it's still this pussy. So they decide to spend the day together and she's gonna give him a little tour of the neighborhood. But before they leave, he says, hey, I'm gonna head back to the house really quick. I just gotta get something and then I can meet you for that tour. So he gets home and guess who he sees? Fucking the cousin's girlfriend. That's right, his daddy. We not surprised, but we are disappointed. He doesn't say anything. He doesn't break it up. He just silently leaves and just like, oh, yep. My daddy. Back to the deacon and his wife. He confronts his wife about finding out that she's pregnant. And she's like, oh, I just haven't been able to tell you yet. We're having a baby. He was like, I have a birth defect of some sort that means that I'll never have kids. They've never discussed this prior to, <laughs> they, okay. But anyway, he has a birth defect that means he can't have kids. So I never told you because you said you didn't want to have kids. So like, why would I tell you? That? I feel like that would be all the more reason to tell her. He'd be like, hey, I don't want to have kids. Fun fact, I can't have them. Like, <laughs> but okay, I'm not sitting here trying to make sense of this shit movie, but he's like, I know I can't have kids. You've been cheating on me. Who have you been cheating on me with? And she's like, no, I'm not, but what are you talking about? Like, who's the father? And she's like, no, I can't to back. Back to JR and the girl, he finally goes full villain and ends up trying to assault her. He wasn't, I mean, he was given creep this entire time. So I guess he just wanted to put the cherry on top. She's like, hey, back up. I'm saving myself for marriage. This is not funny because obviously this is a horrible context for this to happen. But again, he's a terrible actor. He's like whining like he's the victim and it's wild to behold. Come on, girl. Talking about how there was one good thing that happened between us. All the bullshit. It's really, it's really strange in a, tw in a twisted way, twisted way, probably the most accurate thing in this movie but he attacks her again after she's like very adamantly like no the only reason it didn't go further is because 
the pastor came in and and saw him attempting to assault her. She's able to get away, thank God. And that leaves them there to argue. He's like, how did you become so f***ed up, JR? Like, why are you like this? And he was like, it's because I didn't have a father. You want me to be you? Be a preacher on Sunday while another bitch is on a Monday? What? We saw it coming. I did laugh. I did tee hee, cause too, like. <laughs> but Junior's like, yup, I saw him f***ing the cousin's girl a few hours ago. He's like, let me explain and she slaps him real dramatic. And then the son has this very disturbing, smug, slow nod and smile. And then Pass is like, get out of my house. So he leaves with nowhere to go. Probably should have thought of that before you tried to assault somebody. Anyway, so Deacon's wife is trying to contact Pastor over and over and over again, but he keeps dodging her calls because like, obviously he has a lot on his plate these days. But it's funny that when karma bites you in the ass, she seems to just keep getting bigger teeth because it seems like everything just starts to fall apart, which is fun. Next morning, he finds his wife packing to leave him. He tries to apologize and she's like, is she the only person you've cheated on me with? He reluctantly admits that no, she's not the only one. He then tries to reason that he cheated on her because things were different since she had the miscarriage. And she's like, I had a miscarriage. <laughs> All I ask for you to do is be a bit patient with me as I'm trying to heal from that psychologically. Like what happened to the man that I married that loved God and loved his family? And you know, going back to that whole, like you've lost your way thing. But she's like the man that I married that loved God, that cared about his family, he is dead. And then she leaves. They then do their first and only flashback to how he was prior to losing himself. Not that I want this movie to be longer cause it's awful, but it probably would have benefited in the general narrative to have have these because again we've only seen him in church one dime and it was the opening scene <laughs> otherwise we've just seen him smacking cheeks biting his lips yelling <laughs> that's it but yes they do a flashback to when they first got the building that was their first church it was this kind of shitty little building that they were so proud of it was before the money and the power and they just seemed to do it for all the right reasons or what they hoped were the right reasons uh what's really funny about this is that they do nothing to age him down or anything they don't recast him as younger or whatnot to me this just looks like this was like three weeks ago <laughs> And now he's just like, oh, I just got all this money and the bitches and I just lost my way. So <laughs> this is funny. It shouldn't be funny, but it is. Cousin comes over, Tony comes over uh, to tell Pastor that he has broken up with the girlfriend because she has syphilis. <laughs> now, I did not expect syphilis to be the reason like for some reason it's one of those things that you forget is an fsti for some reason also the thing that's really funny about it is that they treat syphilis as if it's a death sentence, which it is not honestly just a few shots of penicillin and you're fine and that's assuming it's been a longer time you've had it that's why you should get checked out regularly people get tested in all your holes <laughs> no seriously get tested in all your holes make sure you're getting your hpv shots to avoid cervical cancer and throat cancer and there's an uptick of drug resistant gonorrhea and you won't be able to suck a dick in peace soon so please use protection thank you but yeah he's like i broke up with her because she said to me we can't have sex because she found out she got syphilis <laughs> so she did have sex with the cousin but knowing she has syphilis she had sex with the pastor unprotected which is hilarious I mean, it's not funny don't do that that's a crime actually to know you have a std and you're not uh, disclosing that. I'm laughing because he's having a real rough few days, it would seem. His wife done left him, his son's an attempted rapist, one side chick done gave him syphilis, the other side chick probably pregnant, but he don't know that yet, but he's soon to find out. And then the bank guy, the, the member, uh, your son tried to assault my daughter, so I'm defaulting on your loan. I'm pretty sure that's not how that works, but that's fine, I'm not complaining. <laughs> like the whole family sucks, go ahead. But just when things look like they couldn't get worse, they get stupider. Because at the last moment, the movie wants to do a switcheroo, did not stick at all and is never returned to. It literally felt like they, like literally scenes that they randomly said, we, we gotta put a Shyamalan twist at the end or people aren't gonna enjoy this shit movie. Fun fact, we didn't enjoy it anyway. <laughs> so anyway, at the last minute, they try to insinuate that the cousin's girlfriend, well, ex-girlfriend, was in cahoots with pastor's wife. If you ask why, 
I too wonder. <laughs> the wife met the girlfriend at the clinic and she was crying about having syphilis. And that's when, for some reason, she devised the plan in her head to do something. Prior to like 12 hours ago, you didn't know he was cheating on you. <laughs> or maybe she did, but we don't know how she knows that if she did know already. But yeah, we don't know why she's doing this, but it's a part of her master plan to give him syphilis. The master plan was for this woman to meet his cousin at the club, ask him about the pastor so that she can come to dinner the next day. <laughs> and then the the plan will commence, I guess. And then she gives her a big bag of money in cash for her to get medication. So they knew that medication is an option, I guess. Yeah, she's like, here's the money. Take this to get medication and to leave town. Sure. Your hair look like you was in um, the remake of Romeo and Juliet. You're giving very Leonardo uh, circa 1997. <laughs> Does that upset you? <laughs> Pastor reads from his Bible, again, possibly for, what, the second time in this entire movie? The first time was the opening scene. Well, us hearing him read scripture as we saw him clap cheek. But he's reading scripture to center himself, I guess. And in walks the pregnant woman, the deacon's wife, upset that he had been dodging her because she's trying to tell him like, hey, I'm pregnant and also my husband knows it's you. He's like, what are you talking about? I didn't even know you were pregnant. In walks in the deacon, disheveled and having his hands behind his back. They're gonna do what you think they're gonna do. So he's got a gun. <laughs> and he's like, I'm gonna shoot you both, okay? And this n has the nerve to say, the Bible says, touch not my anointed. Who anointed you? You are not God's anointed. Exactly, what the hell? And he like, you are like Satan. <laughs> and I gotta throw you into the abyss. I gotta, I gotta cast you from heaven. So as a voiceover plays and pastor is reading scripture about renewing a right heart, they show footage of his son living in a bando. He's this. I couldn't care less what he's doing. They show the cousin finding the girlfriend's ring in the house, like in his, in pastor's house. So I guess that puts together that they were probably doing something, I guess, I don't know. They also show the wife crying over a grave for some reason, like the whole plan was to give him syphilis. I'm sure you weren't a fan of him. As he continues on reading scripture, once he's done, we hear the echoes of two shots. and the ending credits begin to roll as the end of that nothing ass movie. Well, I did it. I <laughs> There are just some movies that feel like uh, a gauntlet, a test of my endurance, and this was definitely one of them. I, uh, I'm proud of myself in a way. I've been trying to trek through this one just because I've had like a vendetta against it. I'm like, I will not be outdone. I will not be outdone by a Tubi movie. Like the fuck? Yeah, it's just as nothing as you'd expect and you're welcome. I'm sure this video was way more entertaining than the actual movie was, so save your breath. But if you want to watch it, of course, it's free on Tubi. It's where great things go to die and terrible things go to thrive. So if you like this video, feel free to like this video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are KennyJD. If you would like to get your hands on my Wish Trend set, that'll be linked down below. I believe this is the last week it's available. You can get my skincare that I use all the time for 45% off. So that's so great for you if you have other bad movies that you'd like to suggest for me feel free to put those down in the comment section feel free to at me on social media i love to hear your suggestions because they're always so demented and i will see you guys next time